Hey everybody, Jason with Davis Shopworks here. I uh been sick <laughs> for like the longest that um I'd been. Um I had a, a, a double ear infection I'm still kind of fighting off. Um I uh just regained my hearing after not having it for well over a week. Um so I wanted to take a moment and make this video about um, the top sides of my sailboat here. Uh, many people that have seen it said that it looks like I sprayed this and I didn't. And so hopefully I can kind of cover those aspects. And this, <clears throat> I'm going to touch a little bit into the bottom job part and a little bit into the top deck part of paint. Um, only because in order to get the job done correctly, um, I kind of tied into all those things. So, um, that's what I'm going to, uh, discuss today is how that paint job went. Um, some tips and tricks, uh, kind of some secrets with it, a little bit of the history behind this paint job and, um, also, a couple of the tools I use to do it, and, and that'll come with the kind of tips and tricks to help you maybe uh, put out a better, uh, you know, like a better finish, a better end product. So, with that being said, if you're a normal subscriber to the channel or you've come here for the tractor videos, this isn't one of them. Um, I'm actually on a forum. I'm a moderator on there. I've got over 20 years of experience or, well... Not over 20 years, but real close to 20 years. I continued to work on boats after um, I got out of the marine industry and still do work on boats from time to time. Um, picky about the jobs I take. But at any rate, I've got about 20 years of marine experience working on sailboats, power boats, all kinds of stuff like that. And so this is me in a new way sharing that information to others. Um, there's been some interest in having me explore that option and put these videos out with this channel that I've started, uh, mainly was started for the work that I was doing in a shop off and on. So if you're looking for tractor videos, there's other videos of that. If you're wanting to hear about the sailboat and, and paint, and this can even apply to other paints as well, really, um, then stick around and, and hopefully this knowledge will be, be um, useful to you. So, first of all, just to kind of make a note here, I'd like to just point out um, that you can see up in here, I've got the shop lights on. <clears throat> you can see the reflection of my stuff in the boat. Um, that's, how, that's how shiny it is. I've never buffed the boat. Um, this paint here, if you cut and buff, you will, um, according to the manufacturer, you will uh, uh, mess with the UV inhibitors of the paint. And so um, I guess I'm going to start by saying that, that this finished product, you can see this, uh, the reflection and stuff like that. So we know that, that we're good there. Let me show you kind of a close-up of the paint. So as you can see, if it'll fo it does focus, yep. You can see a bit of uh, orange peel, that ripple effect. We call that orange peel in the industry, or at least we used to. Um, there is that same effect. You can kind of see it in that light there if you look real close. Um, this boat is, I mean, the sides are a little bit dirty, so you're going to see a little bit of that. There is some dirt in the finish of the paint, um, and I wasn't worried about that because I would take the little bit of imperfection there over the, um, cutting out the UV inhibitor that rises to the top. Mainly speaking to the perfection, which is this gray color, this color here is called Bright Sides. It's a single stage paint. The gray, or grayish color, is called Perfection, which is a two-stage paint. 
Okay, so again, you have to kind of forgive me. Um, I've, <laughs> I've had to put cotton balls back in my ears. I just, this uh, up and down of the hearing and stuff is, is insane. Um, but I'm, I'm on the, the good side of the fight. So um, as I just shown you the paint, the finish and everything, there's, there's some, I don't know if you see it in the video, <laughs> but I see it right here. This is some rub rail marks. Um, I kind of hear myself, so I'm not like screaming at the thing there, but um, sound is a little odd, I guess, because they haven't heard in over a week. But um, so two tools in the arsenal of doing this kind of paint job to start out is this one here is a roller um and i'll, I'll show these again uh, to make sure that that we're seeing these in a little bit here but it's a foam roller um it's got a yellow insert i, I mean that could be any color or whatever but it's foam and um the kind of neat thing about this is is whenever it rolled it'd leave very little tiny bubbles uh, hardly anything that would basically pop themselves Anybody who's done finish work knows that uh, your roller can lift and make air uh, within your coating. It almost mixes air into it. And so as you do the coatings, including like latex paints, I mean, this pretty well goes for any type of paint. Um, whatever your roller type is will leave the finish. And so these are the rollers that were used. They make them in a couple different sizes. The... Um, frame that goes to these is just a metal rod that's bent to like a um, Riddler's hook, so to speak, uh, comes down to a handle. I bought these at Menards, if I remember right. I think Menards just opened up and they had these. Um, really awesome roller for this stuff. They do get ate up by the catalyst, um, but it's not as fast. Um, and I'll get into that. Um, hopefully I can remember to get into that um about eating rollers up and stuff but these were excellent rollers and they make like i said they make different sizes they all go to the same frame now the other thing is is tipping um a, a paint job off a lot of a lot of uh references made to tipping um you cannot be a high quality paintbrush i'm telling you but there is a certain point where you have to say to yourself is a high quality paintbrush worth it now, I just painted some tractor implements that I have made and welded in the shop. I use these cheap china brushes. They literally say china on them. Um, they de-bristle like crazy, uh, meaning, for those that don't know, uh, the bristles, it'll actually shed bristles. Um, anything that's shedding off of this is from my sweater pocket. Um, but anyway, the, the bristles that come out will stay in your paint job and my implements show it. I don't care because it's going to get wore off as I use the implements. I did care, however, while I used uh, it was doing this. So if I had a bad spot of a lot of that air bubbling effect, I would use a high quality paintbrush and I could easily pay an upward, say, 20, 30 bucks for a paintbrush uh, the wider it is, the better tipping that you get. Um, and then I would just wash it out with the solution uh, nearly right away to keep that brush nice and clean. Now, as you can see, this brush has been used. I'm not going to say what, um, I mean, I'm hoping that this is shown again. I'll, I'll run over this towards the end of the video. But at any rate, um, a good high quality paintbrush to tip out is uh, better because your bristles are finer and they will tip out better. So the softer the brush, the more bristles it has, the better that it actually tips out the paint. That's what I've found, that's my opinion. You know, if you're a master painter and you're watching this and you have a differing opinion, then you can put it below or whatever. <laughs> but that's 20 years, that's what I've done. So, okay, so for the top sides of the boat, like I said, this video is gonna be geared towards the top sides is the boat started out the cream color with the brown stripe. It also had the boot stripe down here, which was a two inch wide, I believe, uh, brown vinyl stripe. 
I think that they also maybe put some gold in that or something, but um, at any rate, I did not put the boot stripe back in. I just went ahead and did this uh, top striping. Um, so I didn't do the boot stripe because I couldn't find a color that matched this blue as nicely as I wanted to. I wanted to do the compact logos and stuff like this. Um, and I could have, but then I, I didn't do those. Now I do have a couple of, pardon me, reflective printed um, American flags that I'm gonna put in the back. I've got some changes. There's gonna be a name change to the boat and stuff, um, all these things. But at any rate, whenever I first got the boat, it was in pretty rough shape. Now the sides were not, okay? So the sides were uh, just a couple thin spots for the gel coat. Um, did not appear to be from fender issues or anything like that. Like they weren't really explanatory. Um, now I had fantastic conversations with the guys who built the boat or, or, you know, that own the factory, which like, uh, um, the Hutchins, um, anyway, I talked to one of those guys on there and just asked them, Hey, did you guys have gel coat problems back then? They almost seemed a little offended by it. I meant no offense. I was just trying to figure out what was going on. Uh, I thought it was really cool. I was talking to the owner of the company. Um, so that was a big positive for me with Compaq. Um, Compaq is a great company down there in uh, Clearwater, Florida. Um, and they're still making boats today. Um, so the gel coat wasn't like horribly bad shape. Now, whenever I started, I, I will just put this information out there. I had the rep, uh, my, my personal rep from Interlux. Uh, who had even stopped into my shop, which was this shop here, actually, um, that I had custom uh, designed and, and um, had some guys build it and stuff. And this is where I painted this boat um, and did all the work on it. I stripped the boat completely out. Ended up doing that because of the totality of work that I wanted done, and I wanted it done right. Um, so that, that's what I chose to do. So as we enter videos about the top sides and the bottom work, I'll get into that stuff as well. But for, uh, these, um, uh, or for the deck rather. So for the top sides, um, the process was to use Interlux 2000, which is still on the market today. Perfection, which was a two part polyurethane paint. And then uh, bright sides, which is a single stage uh, for the the striping here. There's more color options in the bright sides than what there is in the uh, two stage paint. Um, all the paint that I got was lot matched, so they all matched in color. Um, same thing for the bright sides. I don't think I even needed a whole lot of it. I think I ordered a quarter too, maybe. Uh, several quarts of this, though. I cannot remember how many. I'd have to really look at my paperwork to know. I started with 2,000. I've gone through gallons of 2,000. Uh, 2,000 is, to me, and may still be, this could be old knowledge. So, kind of going back several years here. Um, Interlux 2000 was the most user-friendly product on the market. Uh, it beat out Pettit's product. Pettit's product required tighter time frames. Um, it was a lot less user-friendly on, uh, on the finishing side and stuff like that. Interlux 2000, however, had more open time frames, uh, was more user-friendly, mainly because of that reason. Uh, but both of those product lines, just talking about those two manufacturers alone, they have a catalyst in them, and that catalyst will eat your rollers up. And so what we had was a red mohair... A roller that was used and I did use those rollers uh, in the finishing of the boat <clears throat> West system I'm a huge West system fanboy so sorry for those that use other than West system I'm I know the product line I love the guys that are there I've had talks with them I've been a, a, a first-time user for um, G flex at one point in my career they were coming out with G flex I got my hands on it it was really awesome had great experience with, with uh, West System 
and uh, I, I love them to death. I am huge about West System, so I'm sorry you're going to get that on this channel. Um, I, I do know some other product lines, but uh, the West System rollers do not hold up to that catalyst. Uh, so if you're wanting to use a foam roller, um, the West System yellow rollers, if they still sell those, because uh, at, at the time, I, I don't know that for sure, <laughs> but they don't hold up to that. So the, and I'm talking about 2000. So 2000 requires several coats. So I got my coats on there and then I added a couple extra and then I sanded it to get the mechanical bind for the, um, for this finish, this top side finish. So then I uh, sanded and cleaned, uh, probably even power washed, I'm sure, the boat. Um, I know for sure I scrubbed it with Dawn soap and rinsed the heck out of it. Um, and then I went ahead and chemical wiped. And then uh, after that was vapored off and everything, then I started applying this with that uh, foam roller that I just showed you. Now, the initial coat is the coat that takes the most paint. It has a time frame of where you can coat again. Um, so the, the first coat is ready to receive the second coat. It's dry enough to receive the second coat chemically, and you get a chemical bond. That is where I presented the second coat, the third coat, the fourth coat, however many coats I did on this thing until I was satisfied or within the manufacturer's specs. Now, those are things we'd have to look at on the bottles now. I don't remember that off the top of my head. It's been a while since I painted this boat. Now, with that being said, whenever this paint had good and plenty of time to dry, I went ahead and sanded the final coat of the first set of coats I did. And then I came back, which I think you've seen with 220 or something like that. And then I came back and rolled a last coat and said, whatever it is, it is. That's, that's it. Whatever it's going to be, it's going to be. And so that's where I ended. Now, after that coat was done and cured, I then went ahead and taped this line back. Um, I used certain lengths or widths of uh, blue painter's tape. And that's how I got my width. I took all those measurements <coughs> and got them all done. So the front and the back of the stripe where they end on the boat, everything is done to original spec, so to speak, uh, to where that brown... Um, and the, and the cream colors were. Now, with that being said, I'm gonna make two notes here, uh, make sure that I, uh, which I did get this. Okay, so um, I wanna make sure I stay on topic here because it's, it's easy for me to get off a of topic with how much has been done to this boat. So into the top sides, this, um, I'm going to make sure that I can see this in the camera. I can. So up here, the rub rail, whenever you remove this, um, I did uh, take and repair that entire seam. I used West System and I believe 403. If I remember right, so it would be 105, 205, 403 is the additive modifier. And... With that, um, with that mix, I had a really good um, combination there that fixed the, I put this back in, um, I had a really good mix there that allowed me to fix that. A lot of guys will use 5200. I don't agree with 5200 in, in this repair point. Um, and I know guys will go against me on it because they'll say, well, 5200 has got movement. Uh, your epoxy doesn't you know you could use g-flex in this position too um i probably wouldn't hesitate with that and i know you can mix g-flex with additives or with the modifiers i mean uh so there there is some modification there it is also thicker you could uh, put it in place and then tape over the cross over the top of it allow the g-flex to cure in position because it is thicker and then and leave it in there and it will have some some give uh, that G-Flex is some really awesome stuff. Um, but that that's what I chose. <clears throat> that's what I did. I made sure that all of the fasteners were in place and that I corrected any of the um, issues uh, that I saw as I went. Now, with that being said, 
this is why I did the whole bow at the time is because I did overlapping on that seam to seal that seam shut. So I had overlapping 2000 going up and paint and everything and the same thing uh, coming down. The same thing occurred at the, at the base of the boat here going into the bottom. Um, I taped and then I took a two inch tape line off the bottom water line, I took a two inch tape line off and I, I primed uh, with that 2000 into the bottom so I could tie into it. The tape line that was left there, I taped back up on top of and came back up to the original water line and then painted my paint to that line. Um, and I, I can get more into that taping um, into another video to better explain that whole process. But basically what I'm telling you right now is, is the 2000 covered into the bottom and into the top deck uh, in order to make sure for a watertight uh, paint job all the way through. And so that's why I did all the work that I did. Now, um, I guess what I'll do is I'll close this video out. I'll step behind a camera and make sure we can see these really well because I, I don't know how they showed up earlier. But if there is any other questions, like I said, I'm on the forum. I'm a forum moderator for the compacts. Um, I can better explain some things. If you have some comments, comment below. I might help some others, and I will do my best to follow up with that. Uh, if you're on the forum and you start up a chain on there, and, and I'll be glad to do my best due diligence to get on there, check that, and uh, answer those questions. So back to the tooling here. So again, the foam roller, uh, that's what that is. Um, it's got that um, insert there. The rod, it does tension, hold on to that rod, um, and they will start to kind of run themselves off, say, say that that rod is coming in here, um, they'll start to run off, but, um, you know, you'll obviously see that happening. And then with the brushes, um, which it looks like it is doing a pretty good job here, this brush is just one I had laying around. This isn't the specific brush I used. You can see my sweater stuff coming off of it. I would debristle them, which is really pushing around on them bristles. Uh, you'll find on some of the brushes, I will literally cut and uh, trim them to get them where I need them. Uh, this one's got a few rogue bristles, say like here. Um, I'd probably cut them off if I was doing a job like this. Uh, but this fine material here, the paint flows out of that and that's a big deal um the the temperature humidity all these things play factors into this but throwing that aside for right now uh, as far as technical information goes the brush tipping um the paint will actually close those up and and allow that finish sometimes it won't let go of the air the film thickness is so thick that it, it won't let go of the air and then that air bubble will stay. That's obviously not what we want. Now, um, I can get into other uh, issues with paint. I'm not gonna do that here. Um, but this is, this is how this paint job was done. Now, if, if you look at this paint job to finish the thoughts on this um, and uh, kind of close out this video, you could see what it looks like and you can see what I showed you in those couple of clips is this paint job is like it's sprayed. And I've had people come in here and tell me I've sprayed the boat. Um, and whenever I get into the deck, you'll be able to see that as well. Um, it looks like I sprayed it. I've, I've not sprayed this boat. Um, I actually rolled it. And um, I'm very thankful for my expertise in the field that... Um, but this is totally doable to make it look like you um, sprayed the boat in your garage um, whenever all you did was use foam rollers and, and uh, brushes. So anyway, I hope that uh, somebody finds this uh, helpful and uh, can, can utilize this knowledge. I know that I got a couple of guys that are wanting to paint their side, the top sides. 
of the boat and um you know and things like that so hopefully that stuff will help you um i'm jason this is davis shop works um back on the mend hopefully i can get some more videos pumped out <laughs> and um anyway I, I have other videos about this boat coming out um i'll be filming them i've been refilming and things like this because i'm i'm just not covering what i want to cover there there's so many things but um i think i might just split some of that up and uh run from there so um anyway any questions put them in the comments below please like subscribe um, I'm trying to grow the channel, get some of this out, get some of the knowledge to folks that want to do their own work. And um, above all else, take care of yourself, and um, I hope your project goes well. You have a great day, and thanks for watching.